Good afternoon, everybody. You are listening to Lake Stevens Vikings Varsity Baseball here for game number 19 out of 20 for the 2019 Varsity Baseball season and the first game for the Lake Stevens Vikings after they have been mathematically eliminated from the Wesco Conference standings, basically. They are eliminated from the 2019 West King playoffs. Kamiak officially now has the final spot after they lost to the Glacier Peak Grizzlies by the final score of 11 to 2. Kamiak, they played our opponent in today's game, the Mariner Marauders, beating them by the final score of 3 to 1. Now, you're probably thinking that's not a very exciting final score until you realize that Mariner has not won a single game and that it was their closest game all year. The Mariner Marauders enter today's game with zero wins and 16 losses. They have have to postpone two games against the Monroe Bearcats, and it was because of those two games that the West Coast Conference decided to make all of their games for the rest of the season non-conference games. So Kamiak, they played Mariner back yesterday and on Friday. Those two games do not count, and the final two games for the 2019 season for the Lake Stevens Vikings will not count for conference play as well, which means that their conference play stands at a record of 3-9. and nine. And their overall record right now is 8-10. and 10. They are looking to even their overall record and to keep Mariner winless. And so far, the starting pitcher for the Lake Stevens Vikings is Xander Fogel looking for his first win of the season. He is 0-1 after losing in his last start against the Glacier Peak Grizzlies. And we do not have the Mariner lineup yet, but when the top of the first inning comes around, we will have the Mariner lineup. When we come back, it will be that top of the first inning here from Mariner High School, currently 57 degrees. And... The only clouds you can see are in the distance as you have a lot of action going on here at Mariner High School. Soccer practice, a softball game just right next to us. It's going to be a very exciting and athletic day all around. And stay tuned. My, once again, my name is Payne Patchett. You are listening to Lake Stevens Vikings Varsity Baseball. And we are now back here in the top of the first inning here at Mariner High School between the Lake Stevens Vikings and the Mariner Marauders. First pitch, fastball swing and a missed strike one. The starting pitcher... Zach Graham to the leadoff hitter, shortstop Hunters Alaska. A swing and a miss, strike one to start off the game. And Graham getting the sign from the catcher, Ryan McCann. Curveball, strike two looking. And Graham will face off against the shortstop, Hunters Alaska. The center fielder, Tanner Lynn, and the right fielder, Trey Long. And the windup and the 0 2. And ball one inside. Graham, one of a number of returning players from last year's Mariner team. And the windup, one, two. A fastball in the dirt to the catcher, McCann. Count stays. Counts now at two balls and two strikes. The lineup for the 8 and 10 Lake Stevens Vikings, as told by manager Josh White, the first three hitters, Alaska, Tanner Lind, and Trey Long. And the 2 2 fastball outside, ball three. And the cleanup hitter, Aaron Lampin in the second baseman. The five hitters, the third baseman, Ethan Jansen, as Theron Perkins is out of the lineup in today's game. Payoff windup. Upstairs, check swing, ball four. And the Vikings start off the game with a leadoff walk and a full count. Brings us the center fielder, number 23, Tanner Lind. Against Zach Graham. And the first pitch upstairs, ball one. McCann looks at first and does not throw. Let's go, kid. Hey, base lock, kid. Go. Hey, off and out. Maybe off and short. Let's go. Come back. It's got three, four. And look over at first. Not in times. Alaska flinching. It was a late and slow throw by Graham. As Alaska will be safe, count stays at 1 and 0. Throw to first, not in time. And the pitch, and a strike one. Tanner looking to bunt. And the fastball getting by him. So the defensive positions for the winless Mariner Marauders is told by the manager. 
Reggie Korn says on the mound is Zachary Graham. Behind the plate is Ryan McCann. Throw to first, not in time. And the infield, third base is Cody McDuffie. At shortstop is Caleb Toig. The second baseman playing is David Villanueva. And at first base is Peter Tronson. And a strike two looking. Count now at one and two. My mistake, Peter Transon, throw to first. Not in time. And Graham getting the sign from McCann, moves his head. And that will be a timeout by Tanner before he throws the pitch. Count stays at one and two. And on the outfield, left field is Trenton Pacheco. One, two, foul ball. Count stays at one and two. As a foul ball will hit the fence behind home plate in the outfield. Left field is Trenton Pacheco. Center field is Jorge Urushia. And at right field is Jacob Coelho. Another timeout. Count stays at one and two. Graham, the throw to first, not in time. And he subs for the Lake Stevens Vikings. Caden Patterson, Theron Perkins, Devin McWaters, Bailey Corley, Cameron Austin, and Colton Hogle. Another storyline in today's game, the varsity debut of the number eight hitter, left fielder Jace Merkerson. One, two, hard hit shot going foul past the third baseline. Count staying at one and two in the lineup for the Lake Stevens Vikings is Hunter Tanner, Trey, Aaron Lampin, and Ethan Jansen. Tommy Lindgren, the catcher in the sixth spot. Tate Bruss, the first baseman at the seventh spot. At the eighth spot, making his varsity debut, number 20, Jace Merkerson. At the ninth spot will be the starting pitcher, Xander Fogel, making his first ever varsity start in the lineup. The one, two, and another foul. Past the third base line, going over to Lake Stevens bullpen. Count staying at one ball. And two strikes. <laughs> and the lineup for the Mariner Marauders starting at Trent Pacheco, Jacob Coelho, and Zach Graham, the pitcher. And then Jorge Hiroshia, Caleb Toig, and Kobe McDuffie. One, two. Inside. Fastball, two and two. Our next is the seven spot, Ryan McCann. The eight spot is Peter Transon, the first baseman. And David Villanueva will be playing at second. It will be Tyson May, number 28, hitting for him at the ninth spot. Two ball, two strikes, Gray on the pitch. And strike three called. A curve just hits above the strike zone, but it is called a strike three. Jackery Graham striking out Tanner Lind for the first out. And the top of the first here is Tanner Lind by mistake. Trey Long, the starting right fielder. And Graham steps off, steps off. So the other games from the Wesco Conference that were played Man, yesterday is Kamiak beating Mariner here at Mariner High School. Cascade shutting out Mount Vernon four nothing, and Monroe beating Jackson five to one. First pitch low in the dirt, ball one. And Trey, a 222 average, 10 for 45. And the pitch swing and a miss, strike one. And the count is even at one ball and one strike. Trey, 10 for 45, five doubles. And a triple, including a double yesterday against Glacier Peak. And with six runs and with three walks, eight strikeouts, and was hit once, one ball and one strike. Gets the sign, swing and a miss, strike two. As Trey is now behind on the count, one ball and two strikes. Graham in the stretch, looks over at first and back at the 
catcher gets the sign one two swing and a miss he gets Trey swinging for the second out of the top of the first now here is Aaron Lampin in the starting second baseman And Aaron Lampin in a 283 average entering this game, 15 for 53 and four doubles. Eight runs, five walks, 10 strikeouts, has been hit three times this year. First pitch from Zachary Graham, first pitch, foul ball. This defense starts at 0-1. And left field and left center field listed at 350 feet. Dead center field as well. Right center at 336 and right field at 314. And the 0-1 Graham. And a curve, strike, ball two. Zalasco going to second. And he will be safe in there. Hunter Zalasco, his ninth stolen base. Count is even at one and one. Lake Stevens starting off with a runner in scoring position with two outs in the top of the first. Lampin in now to count one ball and one strike. Grammy puts the ball in the glove. And the glove at belt length looks over at second and back at the plate, the 1-1. One, one. Low in the dirt, ball two. Now Lampin in went one for three with a base hit in the fourth inning in the game against Glacier Peak. Also scored after moving the second on an error in a couple of wild pitches. Graham looking at second, does not throw. And the stretch by Graham looking at McCann, toes the rubber, looks for the sign, goes over to second and back of the play, the wind and the pitch. And a blooper, this one going into short center field that will fall. Zalasco's gonna round around third and Lake Stevens has an early one nothing lead on an RBI bloop single, the short center field by Aaron Lampinen. Salasco so scoring all the way from second, brings up Ethan Jansen, the starting third baseman, entering with a 269 average, seven of 26, hit one of the team's two home runs this season, the other being Bailey Corley, who's currently in the dugout. Throw to first, gets past the first baseman, Tranton, and Lampinen's gonna go to second. And now he'll stay at second as it takes a while for the first baseman Transon, along with the right fielder Jacob Coelho to get near the ball as it rolled towards the right field line. So it'll be an error on the pitcher Graham. It'll move Lampin in to second. And once again, the Vikings have a runner in scoring position at second base with two outs. Jansen yet to see a pitch, looks over at second, then back at home, the wind and the pitch. Outside ball one. And Graham getting the sign from McCann in the stretch. Looks over at home. Glove at belt length of pitch upstairs. Ball two. There are four reserves for the Mariner Marauders. There is number eight, Shaquille Khan. Number 11, Max Savchuk. Number four, Ray Maga Castillo. And number 10 is Wander Castillo. Two balls, no strikes, wind up pitch. A foul ball count now at two and one. There are a number of events going on as well outside of the baseball field. There is the Mariner soccer practice. They're having a pretty solid season this year. And Mariner softball playing against the Monroe Bearcats just across from us. Two balls and one strike. Graham looks over at second to stretch. The wind, the pitch. Swing and a miss count is even at two and two. Graham evening the count, runner at second base, looks over at second. Love at belt length, the pitch, inside full count. Runner at second with two out, Graham in stretch. Love at jersey length, looks over at second, looks over, does not throw as the Shortstop, Caleb Atoy goes over to second. 
and get ready to catch the ball. Does not attempt to make the catch. Payoff pitch, fly ball. This one going to the first baseman, Transon. Transon, he is under it. And he is not able to find the ball. He lost it in the sun, and another run will score. That ball was up in the air for a while, and it looked like Transon, he was standing under that ball for a good maybe three, four seconds before that ball fell. It went to his right, and he wasn't able to make the catch and adjust about a step to his right. That ball will fall. It'll be a error on the first baseman. And the Vikings now lead two to nothing. Here is Tommy Lindgren, the catcher. Actually almost arguing to make that a base hit. Jansen's gonna go, run, throws outside, throw to second, is not in time. And Ethan Jansen has a stolen base. His fourth of stolen base in, of the year in five attempts. Well, actually, no, that, the ball did not hit his glove, so Jansen's gonna get a single out of that. And the 1 0 pitch swing and a miss strike one. For my mistake, now the count is no balls and two strikes. Graham, once again, a runner at second. And Graham looks over at second and back at first. 0 2 curve outside, ball one. And Graham, the one, two, fly ball foul. Lingren keeping the at bat alive. Count staying at one and two. Graham looking over at second to stretch. Looks a second a couple of times and back at home. The pitch, hard hit ball. This one going in the right field. And this one will be going towards center field. It'll be caught by the center fielder, Jorge Ruscia, and will end the top of the first inning. It'll be two runs off of two hits. One error and one runner left on. Lake Stevens taking an early 2-0 lead as Xander Fogel looks to get his first win of the year. Xander is 0-1 with an ERA of 5.96. He'll face off against the left fielder Trenton Pacheco, the right fielder Jacob Coelho, and the starting pitcher Zachary Graham. As the score is now Lake Stevens 2, Mariner coming up as we go in the bottom of the first inning here at Mariner High School. And we are now back in the bottom of the first inning. Lake Stevens taking an early 2-0 lead over the Mariner Marauders. Xander Fogel to wind up in the first pitch. Fastballs strike one looking. Xander Fogel to the starting left fielder, number 15, Trenton Pacheco. That is spelled P-A-C-H-E-C-O. And Xander the stretch looking at the catcher, Tommy Lindgren, wind up in the 0-1. Fastball, it's a pop, fly ball right near the first baseline in the infield grass. My mistake, right near the third baseline in the infield grass. And it'll be caught by Xander for the first out on the bottom of the first inning. Now here is the right fielder, Jacob Coelho. And Xander in his seventh game in his fourth start of the year, 0-1 with an ERA of 5.96. He has allowed 12 earned runs and 14 and a third. First pitch, a ball one inside, fastball. And Fogel, 14 and a third, 16 hits, 12 earned runs, nine walks, and 14 strikeouts. Once again with an ERA of 5.96, one ball, no strike. Xander in the stretch to wind up in the pitch, and a foul grounder. Fielded by Ethan Jansen, the third baseman. He throws it to Tate Brust in time for the second out in the bottom of the first. Now here is Zach Graham, the starting pitcher. Had a pretty rough first inning, allowing two runs. And although he struck out two batters, he did allow two base hits. And Xander in the stretch, getting the sign from Tommy Lindgren. First pitch upstairs, ooh, fastball inside, ball one. And the defensive positions for the Lake Stevens Vikings as told by manager Josh White on the mound, Xander Fogel. Behind the plate is Tommy Lindgren. On the infield at third base is Ethan Jansen. Shortstop is Hunter Zalasco. Fogel in the stretch, 1-0, the wind up in the pitch. And a ball two inside. 
At second base is Aaron Lampinen. First base is Tate Brust. In the outfield, playing at left for the first varsity start is Jace Merkerson. Center field is Tanner Lind. Right field is Trey Long, 2-0. This one low ball three. And the lineup for the 0-16. Mariner Marauders is told by, uh, it says here the manager, Braden Degamo. That was the manager at the start of the year. And this will hit Graham square on the back. And he will walk over the first. Now I'll bring up the cleanup hitter, number 17, Jorge Arushia, the starting center fielder. And so the rest of the Mariner Marauders lineup. Pacheco Coelho, first pitch, a strike one looking fastball under the strike zone. It is Pacheco Coelho and Graham. Jorge Arusio, who is currently at the plate. Caleb Atoyk, the shortstop, who is on deck currently. At the sixth spot is the third baseman, Cody McDuffie, the 0-1. Outside, ball one. At the seventh spot is the starting catcher, Ryan McCann. At the eighth spot, the first baseman, Peter Transon, number 32. And at the ninth spot, hitting for David Villanueva, the second baseman will be number 28, Tyson May. Count as one ball and one strike to pitch. And a strike two looking. <laughs> Just gets the outside of the strike zone. Mariner getting their first base runner on a 3-0 count. Zachary Graham getting hit on the back. Runner goes, check swing. Did he go? Yes, he did. Tommy Lindgren to throw the first in time. And that will end the first inning. It is no runs on no hits, no errors. And one runner left on. The score, Lake Stevens, two Mariner nothing. As we take a quick break as we go into the top of the second. As Zachary Graham will face off against the bottom three hitters, Tate Bruss, Jace Merkerson making his first varsity at bat and first varsity start. And Xander Fogel, who is making his first varsity start in the lineup as they try to increase this 2-0 lead for the Lake Stevens Vikings. And we are now back in the top of the second inning. The Vikings looking to extend their 2-0 lead over the Mariner Marauders. Zachary Graham wind up in the first pitch to Tate Bruss is a shot over the shortstop. Caleb Atoig in the right field. My mistake, left field. We we'll start the top of the second inning. And a first pitch single by Tate Bruss. And now we'll bring up the number eight hitter setting the stage for his varsity debut, number 20, Jace Merkerson. After spending the entire season with the junior varsity team with the exception of a couple of games, Graham the stretch. Love his belt length. First pitch is a fastball low, ball one. And Tate's going to go to second on the wild pitch. As also on deck as well, making his first appearance at the plate. Xander Fogel, the starting pitcher. And Graham the stretch. Love at belt length, looking at the catcher, the 1-0. And a foul chopper. This one almost, almost going into the Lake Stevens dugout. Along the third baseline, evening the count at 1-1. One and one. And Graham, he threw 33 pitches in that first inning. Love at belt length. The stress looks over at second a couple of times and back at home towards McCann. The 1-1 one, one, and a strike two looking curve. Through 13 balls for 20 strikes. For 33 pitches compared to Xander who threw only 12 pitches against four batters back in the first inning. Count now one and two. Graham the stretch to wind up in the pitch. And a line shot, and it's got Tins in the hole. And left field, Tate's riding around third to throw, cut off by the third baseman. And the ball gets off of the glove, and Jace goes to second off of the error. It'll be an RBI single and error on the first varsity at bat for Jace Merkerson. It was a floater, it went into left field. And Jace, he got to first and saw that the left fielder threw it and tipped off the glove of the third baseman, McDuffie. First pitch to Xander Fogel, a fly ball. This one staying in the infield. The pitcher, Graham, calling for it and will make the catch for the first out in the second inning. 
So it will be a single and an E7 for Jace Merkerson. He's currently at second. And the run will count towards Merkerson. We'll get an RBI. And Fogel on the first pitch pops out to the pitcher, Graham. We go to the top of the order for the second time this afternoon. Brings up the shortstop, Hunters Alasco. He was walked on a full count, got a stolen base a second, and then scored on an RBI single by the cleanup hitter, Aaron Lampinen. Graham looking at second, the stretch. Looking at McCann and looking at second, the first pitch. A hey, ball one inside. And Graham the stretch. Toe in the rubber, looking at second base. Glove at belt length, looking at McCann, then back at second, the pitch. Low in the dirt. All right, ball two. Lake Stevens now with a 3 0 lead over the Mariner Marauders. Looking over at second, 2 1. 2 0. Outside ball three. And Graham toeing the rubber, currently behind on the count. Is not doing a really good job so far in terms of pitch count. Again, 33 pitches in the first, definitely more here, the 3 0. And a strike one looking. And Zalasco now the 3 1 count. Graham looking over at second. No one is there at second to get Merkerson. So the final series for the entire 2019 season starts off with Lake Stevens against Mariner. Looking over at second to wind up in the 3 1. And a foul chopper. This one almost getting into the Lake Stevens dugout again, and once again, it's another full count. For Hunters Alasco, he faced one back in the top of the first that started this game, got on base on a full count walk, stole second, and then scored on an RBI single by Aaron Lampinen. Graham looking at second base, and a timeout by Hunter. Trying to get him off. So the rest of the games, Glacier Peak playing at Cascade. Jackson playing up north against Mount Vernon. Payoff pitch, foul chopper. As he hits right near the on deck hitter, Tanner Lind. So it'll be Glacier Peak playing at Cascade. Lake Stevens here playing at Mariner. Jackson at Mount Vernon. And Kamiak at Monroe. And the count still full. Wind up payoff pitch. Another foul tip. As the count stays full. And the other storyline regarding the end of the year was that there are three teams. That is Jackson, Monroe, and Cascade who are currently in the middle of a three-way tie for first. Currently Cascade is at first place with an eight and two record uh, for the top three seeds. Getting the first two seeds in the tournament is huge. Payoff, another foul chopper. Going into foul territory and uh, once again, right towards the Lake Stevens dugout, count stays full. So currently, Cascade with an eight and two conference record. Monroe, a seven and three conference record at second place. And Jackson at a six and four record. Monroe, they beat Jackson five to one yesterday. And now we'll be playing against Kamiak to try and get more. Then it's Mount Vernon, Kamiak, and Glacier Peak all with identical four and six records. Lake Stevens is below them. Payoff, another foul. There's nine pitches total in the at bat. And Lake Stevens under it with a three and nine record. Count stays at full at three and two. Zalasco waiting for the pitch from Graham in the stretch. Love at belt length, looking over at Murkerson at second, back at home. Payoff pitch upstairs, ball four. And once again, Zalasco has won the battle against Zachary Graham with another walk here in the second inning. Brings up Tanner Lind. Struck out looking 
on a fastball that just hit the top part of the strike zone for the first out in the first inning. Now Lake Stevens with runners on first and second. Graham looking over at second, glove at belt length. Throw to second is not at time to the shortstop, Caleb Batoy, who faked the throw to the pitcher, trying to throw Murkerson off. Tried to get him with a hidden ball trick there. Does not work. Markerson stays at second base. And Graham in the stretch glove at belt length. First pitch upstairs, ball one. Tanner trying to bunt. That is the first time this year we've ever seen either Lake Stevens or the opponent try a hidden ball trick. Now you don't see it that often in the major leagues, but here at high school, I think that was the first time I ever really tried anyone Neither seen anyone try to do that. The 1-0, the pitch, tries bunting. This one going down the third baseline towards the on-deck hitter, Trey Long. Evens the count at 1-1. One one. And Graham now sitting at 49 pitches through an inning and a third. Here is pitch number 50. The 1-1, one, one. nope, looks over at second. That is Toe and the rubber looking at the catcher McCann. Tanner Lynn count one ball, one strike the stretch. And a glove at belt length. Graham, the 1-1, one, one. tries butting for it. This one will fall foul again. This one going down the third base line. Count now one and two. And Graham. Ahead of the camp of the Vikings trying to get some more runs here on this Lake Stevens onslaught. Trying to make it bigger and it already is. Graham looking at second, the wind up, one, two, foul. Tanner staying alive. Now, Trey Love on deck currently wearing glasses as he was saying after he struck out swinging at the end of the top of the first that he couldn't even see the pitch. So he's going to try something new with the glasses. One, two upstairs. Count is even at two balls and two strikes. So Lake Stevens looking to keep Mariner winless on the year for the first time since 2015. Two balls and two strikes. Looks over a second wind up the pitch. Strike three called against Tanner looking again. But a third strike up for Graham. That brings up Trey Long. Let's see if we can try with the glasses on. He had some trouble apparently finding the baseball when he was on there. Saying it was probably because of the sun. And he couldn't see the ball. He struck out swinging on four pitches. See if he can knock in a couple. Throw to second. Not in time to get Murkerson. And Graham getting the sign from McCann to stretch. Looks over at second. And the first pitch, swing and a miss, strike one. Zalasco at first and Jace Merkerson at second, no balls, one strike. Looks over at second base and the wind up first pitch. My mistake, ball one inside. And Graham looking for the sign, gets it, goes in the stretch. Bergson at second, wind up, 1-1. One, one. Chopper, this one going to the shortstop, Barucia. My mistake, a toig gets out of the glove and rolls into center field. Merkerson's going to score, and Zalasco will go to third. Trey Long will get the first, and Lake Stevens now leads 4-0. It's an error off of the shortstop, Caleb Atoig. And the third error by the Mariner Marauders. And it gives the Vikings now a 4-0 lead. Here is Aaron Lampin and got that RBI single. Back in the first inning that scored Zalasco from second base. Now he has a chance to knock him in again 
in addition to maybe Trey Long if he can hit it hard enough. And Graham, Trey's gonna run. Graham's gonna step off and Trey will be out at second base as he was looking to steal second. Now we'll end the top of the second inning. It is two runs off of two hits, two errors, and one runner left on. Lake Stevens, they double their lead now to four to nothing. Xander Fogel will face off against the five, six, and seven hitters. Caleb Atoig, the shortstop. Cody McDuffie, the third baseman. And Ryan McCann, the catcher. Again, the score, Lake Stevens four, Mariner nothing. And we are now back in the bottom of the second inning. Xander Fogel throwing 12 pitches against four batters as the Vikings now increase their lead to four nothing. Wide up in the first pitch, upstairs, ball one. This is to the starting shortstop and the five hitter, number 33, Caleb Atoig. They'll face off against a toy, Cody McDuffie and Ryan McCann. The wind up in the 1 0 of foul hits the netting. That is only above the Mariner bleachers and dugout. There is no netting above the Lake Stevens bleachers and dugout along the third baseline, only along the first baseline. And it stretches towards the end of the dugout to which there is no netting above the bullpen. Wind up 1 1. Xander and a foul ball hits the fence 1 and 2. Very sunny afternoon here at Mariner High School. Ryan outside the field of play. Past the outfield is the street where you see a bunch of cars go by every day. The one, two, Xander, ground ball. This one getting into Zalasco. Hits his chest, throws a Tate at first in time for the first out, the bottom of the second. What a play by Hunter Zalasco. And that'll bring up the third baseman, Cody McDuffie, number six. And Cody McDuffie, the starting third baseman for the Marauders, is one of a few players that actually played for the Marauders last year. First pitch, a ball one, fastball upstairs. And the wind up, and the 1 0 in the dirt, ball two. And McDuffie, 2 0. Low ball three. And the 3 0, strike one, looking right down the middle. And the 3 1, a strike two looking. Xander turned this around from a 3 0 count, now to a full count, 3 and 2. And a payoff pitch, ground ball to Zalasco off of the chest, a bad hop. And it'll be an error by Zalasco. With one out in the bottom of the second. Now here's Ryan McCann, the starting catcher. And the first pitch, a strike one looking. From Xander Fogel doing pretty solid. So here, 12 pitches in the first inning. And so far, 11 here in the second. Still doing pretty solid. The 0 1. This one, a nice play by Jansen. Throws the second for one, throws the first for two in time. A 5 4 3 double play to end the second inning. What a snag by Ethan Jansen, who throws it to Lampinen, who throws it to Tate. 5 4 3 ends it. It is no runs on no hits, one error. And nobody left on. Score is still 4-0 Lake Stevens over the Mariner Marauders. As the Vikings will start off in the top of the third, the middle of the order, Aaron Lampin and Ethan Jansen and Tommy Lindgren as they look to increase his 4-0 lead. And we are now back in the top of the third. First pitch, a strike one looking. Zachary Graham against the starting second baseman, Aaron Lampin and 
He had a chance at the plate back in the second inning before Trey Long tried to steal second and was caught stealing by the pitcher. Wind up in the 0-1. A one hopper past the catcher. Ryan McCann evens the count at one and one. Zachary Grammy has thrown 58 pitches through two innings and is currently on pace to be the losing pitcher. He'll face off against the middle of the order. Aaron Lampin and Ethan Jansen and Tommy Lindgren, one and one. And a foul ball hits the fence, count is one and two. Lampin and back in the first inning, got that RBI single that scored Hunter Zelasco from second. Graham gets a sign in position, curve, this is slow. Slow line drive ball past the glove of the second baseman into the hole in center field. And Aaron Lampinen now two for two with a leadoff single to start the third. Now here is Ethan Jansen, the third baseman. He came after Lampinen and also got an RBI single. That one scored Lampinen from second after he got the second base on an error by the pitcher Graham. We tried to throw in the first to try and pick him off. Throw to first, not in time. Mariner, they're relying on a bunch of fake throws. Relying on the hidden ball trick to try and get him out. First pitch, Graham, low ball one. Graham looking over at first in the stretch. Graham, the throw to first is not in time. Not in time that he first based in Peter Transon. And Graham looking at McCann in the stretch, 1-0. Outside, strike. Count is even at one and one. McCann fakes the throw to first. And and Graham in the stretch for the first. Not in time, so currently, even though Cascade has the number one seed in the West Coast Conference, it's up for grabs between Cascade, Mariner, I would say Cascade, Jackson, and Monroe. Throw to first, not in time again. Zachary Graham really picking on all the base runners at first base. And from what he can at second, Graham in the stretch, now he's going to second. And now he's caught in a rundown, lamping in the rundown, throwing the transit at first, and he is out. As the count stays at one and one, another base runner gunned down by Zachary Graham. And now go for the first out in the top of the third inning. And Graham stepping off. And Jansen with some firepower here. Now the bases are empty, one and one. Swing and a miss, strike two. And the one two wind up Graham. Outside gets past the catcher, McCann. Evens the count at now two and two. And now in position, 2-2, ground ball foul. Oh! Near the Lake Stevens dugout, a nice snag there by the third base coach for Lake Stevens, Jan Novak. Wow. And so Mariner last season, they also finished last place in the West Coast 4A Conference with a 4-15 and record. They were 1-13 and in conference play, a slow off. And curve. Count is now full at three and two. And the payoff pitch, Graham, the wind up. Swing and a miss. He gets Ethan Jansen swinging in the second out of the third. As the fourth strikeout now for Graham, and it brings up Tommy Lingren, the catcher. He popped out to the center fielder. Jorge Urushia to end the top of the first inning. Okay. 
And Graham to wind up in the first pitch. Inside, ball one. And Graham to wind up 1 0. And a golf shot. This one going into center field, right center field, short right center field is caught by Arushia. And that'll be a one, two, three, top of the third. No runs on one hit, no errors, and nobody left on. Score stays at 4 0 Lake Stevens over the Mariner Marauders. Xander Fogel going on the mound in the bottom of the third. It is the 8 9 and 1 hitters, Peter Transon. And the first baseman, the designated hitter, Tyson May, and Trenton Pacheco, the leadoff left fielder, will come up to the plate against Xander Fogel to try and trim this 4 0 lead. As we go into the bottom of the third inning, you are listening to Lake Stevens Vikings Varsity Baseball. And we are now back in the bottom of the third inning. Lake Stevens still leads the Mariner Marauders by a score of four to nothing. Xander Fogel back on the mound after throwing 12 pitches for a second consecutive inning. He'll face off against the eight hitter Peter Trance in the first baseman. First pitch, swing and a miss, foul. Count starts at 0-1. Xander Fogley threw five balls and seven strikes in the first inning. In the second inning, he threw four balls for eight strikes. He's looking to try and make that pitch count shorter here as he'll start off with Transon on an 0 1 count, then the nine hitter Tyson May, and then Pacheco, the 0 1, wind up, and a swing and a miss strike, too. Work ahead. Go. Go, Xander. Come in. Come in. And Xander. No balls, two strikes, wind up in the pitch. Swing and a miss, strike three. Tommy Lindgren tags Peter Transon and for the second strikeout of the game for Fogel. Here is Tyson May, the designated hitter. He is hitting for the second baseman, David Villanueva. And Xander in the stretch, wind up first pitch. Fastball, strike one. Chance of moving in right near the infield. Grass, the 0-1. Swing and a miss, strike two. Currently now 57 degrees. Idea, Tommy. Pretty decent weather. Really okay. nice day for baseball here. You can barely see a cloud in the sky. There were clouds in the distance on all four corners. And the 0-2 is swing and a miss. Nope, a foul. Nice and the ball in the dirt. And it keeps the at-bat alive. And Xander count stays at 0 and 2. The pitch, another foul. And Xander getting the sign from Lingering. And now in the stretch, no balls and two strikes. Wind up in the pitch. Swing and a miss, strike three. And that's strikeout number three on the afternoon for Xander Fogel. Brings us to the top of the order for the second time around for the Marauders. That is Trenton Pacheco. And Xander the first pitch. Swing and a miss, strike one. And Xander getting the sign from the catcher, Tommy Lindgren. Now, and the stretch, no in one, Xander the pitch. Strike two looking. A fastball right down the middle. So Mariner finished last season with a record of four and 15. And there were one in 13 in conference play. The 0-2 foul ball is the backstop. And they lost four players last year due to graduation as Anthony Lopez, Brian Rosen, Elijah White, and Brett Otterson, who is a four-year player, was the best player for Mariner out of the four-year players that played for him, the 0-2. Swing and a miss, did he go? Yes, he did. Xander Fogel strikes out the side to end the third inning. No runs, no hits, no errors, and nobody left on. Lake Stevens still with a 4-0 lead over the Mariner Marauders. As will be the 7, 8, and 9 hitters. Back in the top of the fourth, Zachary Graham going back to the mound. It'll be Tate Bruss, Jace Merkerson, and Xander Fogel again 
is the same thing in the top of the second. That was also the last time the Vikings got some runs on the board. Let's see if they can do some more here from Mariner High School to score. Lake Stevens four, Mariner nothing. And we are now back in the top of the fourth inning. Lake Stevens leading Mariner by a score of four nothing. Wind up in the first pitch from Zachary Graham to Tate Bruss, the ball one upstairs. Tate Bruss started off the top of the second inning with a base hit into left field and scored on an RBI single by Jace Merkerson, the on-deck hitter, the 1-0 wind up. Swing and a miss, strike one as the ball gets away from the catcher, Ryan McCann. So Zachary Graham threw 13 pitches. He threw 33 in the first, 25 in the second, 13 in the third for 71 total. Through three third inning, three full innings, he has thrown 73 here, 74. The 1-1, one, one, strike two looking. And he'll face off against the bottom three hitters of the order, Tate Bruss, Jace Merkerson, and Xander Fogel. One ball and two strikes. Looking for the sign, the wind up and the pitch by Graham. Line shot into the hole in center to start the top of the fourth inning. And Tate Brust is now two for two with two singles. Now here is Jace Merkerson looking to duplicate Tate. And try and get a base hit of his own. As Merkerson, he got an RBI single into left field that scored Tate from second. And then he advanced to second base off of an error by the left fielder Trenton Pacheco when he tried throwing it into the infield. First pitch by Graham, hard hit shot. That one going into left, left field going. That is a fair ball. As Jace will stay for a single. As that one falls just fair right near Pacheco and Jace Merkerson is now two for two in his first varsity start. Tate goes to second, he was looking for third but then saw where the ball was going as it went through the glove of the shortstop, Caleb Batoy, who was right near the baseline between second and third. Now here is Xander Fogel, the pitcher. A chance to not only get his first varsity hit, but his first RBI, first pitch. Ball one inside. Fogel was the first time in the last inning. Back in the second inning, it was his first plate appearance. This season, he had a couple last year when he came up from the junior varsity team. Now, Xander now looking for his first varsity hit this season. He had one last year, which he got a double against the Monroe Bearcats. Pinch hitting as the Vikings would win that game that was at Monroe High School. No, my mistake, that was at Lake Stevens. It was the nine inning game in which the Vikings won two to one. Graham, the 1-0 outside, ball two. Two balls, no strikes. It is Merkerson at first, Tate at second. Graham looking over at second base and back at the plate a couple of times. Wind up in the 2-0. Hard hit shot. That is a base hit. And Tate, he is staying at third. It is the first base hit for Xander Fogel. Three straight singles. And the bases are now loaded. Hunters Alasco, the leadoff hitter, going back to the top of the order with a chance to knock in a couple of runs. We have Devin McWaters. Pinch hitting for Tanner Lind at the number two spot in the order. And it looks like they might take Zachary Graham out of the game. He has thrown a large number of pitches through three plus innings. As he has thrown 79 pitches through three plus. As there were also a couple of chances where Runners would have advanced. Tate almost advanced the third base after the base hit by Merkerson. And Xander, on Xander's base hit, Tate almost advanced to third, but he didn't know for sure if that ball was going to fall as well. Now, now Zalasco, he's been walked in his last two at bats. He has scored a run and he has a stolen base. He is really good with winning battles here. First pitch. Low strike one, ooh. Curveball into the strike zone. All right. Tate at third, Jace at second, Xander at first. No balls in one strike. 
Graham in the stretch, shaking off a couple of signs from McCann. Now in the stretch, about his toe in the rubber, looks at third. Love at belt length, the 0-1 upstairs. Count is even at one ball and one strike, so. And back in the first innings, Alasco was walked on a full count. Well, in the second inning, Zalasco was also walked on a full count, but also had four extra pitches due to foul balls to wind up in the 1-1. And a foul chopper, count is one and two. Going behind home plate. So pinch hitting for Tanner Lynn will be Devin McWaters. Easily the best bunter on the team for the Vikings. Had a fair share of really good bunts. Count is one and two. Grand the wind up the pitch outside. Count is even at two and two. And let the battle commence for the third time this afternoon. Graham now exceeding 80 pitches through three and a plus against Alasco, who is back up to the play for the third time. 2-2, a ground ball that gets away from McDuffie, the third baseman. Tate's going to score. Jace Merkerson driving around third. Xander is going to go to third base, and the throw to the plate is in time to get Merkerson. There's a throw from left field from Trenton Pacheco. And that will get the first out. A run will score. Tate will score. Oh, Merkerson riding around third. And he will be out on a 7-2. And Xander goes to third base. It'll be an RBI single for Hunters Alasco. My mistake. An RBI double for Hunters Alasco. The score. Now Lake Stevens 5, Mariner nothing. They're going to take Graham out of the game as Devin McWaters walks up to the plate. They're afraid of Devin McWaters. They're afraid of a pinch hitter. <laughs> Taking him out for Tanner. <laughs> They're gonna bring in a new pitcher. There's still yet to be a pitcher on the mound. Take a quick break, we'll find out who it is. Top of the fourth, Lake Stevens now with a five nothing lead over the Mariner Marauders with one out. And the bases on second and third covered by Xander and Hunters Alasco. And we are now back into the Top of the fourth inning, the Mariner Marauders bringing in a new pitcher and the starting center fielder, number 17, Jorge Arushia. Now move Zachary Graham behind the plate at catcher. And the count starting off against the pinch hitter, Devin McWaters. First pitch, a ball. Next pitch, a strike one looking. Next pitch, a ball two. Is currently one out in the top of the fourth. Runners on second and third. Xander at second, Hunter at third, and the 2 1 pitch, a strike two looking. And the count is even, wind up 2 2. Upstairs, full count. And Zachary Graham done for the afternoon. And the count is now full. Arushi on the wind up and the pitch. Foul ball staying alive. So Zachary Graham throwing 84 pitches in three and a third. And the payoff pitch upstairs, ball four, bases are loaded. Brings up another pinch hitter as Josh White bringing in the reserves. The takeover, this time for Trey Long, it is Caden Pattison. And Arushia wind up first pitch, strike one looking. And Caden Pattison going to Maine to play hockey next year after playing the last few years here for the Junior Silver Tips. Next pitch upstairs, ball one. It's a very interesting path to go to. It's going to the other side of the country, playing another sport. And Caden also a huge fan of baseball too. Wasn't able to play at 1-1 outside, ball two. And it's also a very interesting scenario too for Caden to go to Maine to play hockey. Quick pitch, 2-1. Strike two looking. 
Count is even at two and two. And it's really interesting too. I wonder if anybody else is going somewhere to help out with sports. The two, two, a ground ball. This one going to the shortstop. A toy who tossed it to second. Throw to first is not in time. And another run will score. It'll be an RBI fielder's choice by Caden Pattison. It'll score Xander from third. Devin McWaters will be out at second. Zalasco going to third. And Xander Fogel now with his first run. For the Lake Stevens varsity baseball team. Brings up another pinch hitter. Pinch hitting in the cleanup spot for Aaron Lamp. And then will be Theron Perkins. And the score now, six to nothing. First pitch, swing, and a miss, strike one. Really hard to tell now who's playing in center field due to the jerseys. The jerseys, the Mariner Marauders have the striped jerseys where the top half is full, the color white, with the blocked letters, Mariner with the dark blue letters with the yellow outline, 0 and 1. Ball is low, and Caden's gonna go to second on a stolen base. And on the bottom half of the Mariner jerseys is all stripes with the block numbers onto the right. Count is even at one and one, Arushia. Fly ball, that one going into, staying in the infield. There's Caleb Atoy calling for it and will make the catch, almost loses it, but will make the catch to end the top of the fourth. It is two runs off of four hits, no errors. And two runners left on. The score now, Lake Stevens, six. Mariner, nothing. As Xander Fogel will go back to the mound. He has thrown 36 pitches, 12 pitches in the first, 12 pitches in the second, 12 pitches in the third. Can he throw 12 pitches in the fourth? Well, we'll just have to wait to find out. The bottom of the fourth inning, they'll face off against Jacob Coelho, Zachary Graham, and Jorge Arusha. As the Vikings, they add two more runs onto the scoreboard. They lead 6-0 as Fogel. We'll go back to the mound here at Mariner High School. One, two, three, here we go. And we're now back in the bottom of the fourth inning. Lake Stevens now leading the Mariner Marauders six to nothing. First pitch from Xander Fogel due to right fielder Jacob Coelho Need to the sophomore right hander. A strike one looking. And the 0-1 low in the dirt. Count is even at one and one. Xander Fogel has thrown 12 pitches in the past three innings, five balls, seven strikes in the first inning, four balls and eight strikes in the second inning, and he could not get any better than this, zero balls and 12 strikes in the third. This one, a bunt, ball two. And Ethan Jansen running towards home plate to try and field the ball. So now defensively, there are a couple of changes. At second base is Theron Perkins. And at center field is Devin McWaters. Right field is Caden Pattison. And the 2-1 pitch, foul ball, 2-2. Two two. So Xander Fogel will face off against the heart of the order, 2-3-4, and four, Jacob Coelho, Zachary Graham, and the center fielder, Jorge Arushia. As the count now, 2-2, two two. Xander in the stretch, wind up, pitch. Low ball, three, full count. Count is full for the first batter. First time since the second inning that Xander has to face that payoff. Foul chopper. And the at-bat stays alive. And Xander getting the sign from Tommy. Payoff pitch, fly ball, that is leaning foul as it goes out of foul territory. You got a number of runners running, running for that one. Xander from the mound, Theron from second. The count stays at a full count, three and two. And Xander the wind up, payoff, swing, and a miss, strike three. Xander Fogel striking out the last four batters that he has faced, brings up his fifth strikeout of the afternoon. Now here is Zachary Graham, who has transitioned from being the starting pitcher to the starting catcher. My mistake, 
just the catcher, not the starting catcher. Taking over for Ryan McCann. First pitch, fly ball. That will go to the second baseman, Theron Perkins. Throw the first is in time for the second out in the bottom of the fourth inning. First time in a while that Theron's played over at second. Now here is Jorge Arusha, who's the new pitcher for the Marauders. As Xander now nine pitches through two batters. Here is pitch number 10, first pitch. Outside, ball one. So Devin now playing at center, Caden at right, Theron at second. Those are so far the only defensive changes. One ball, no strikes. Theron, the wind up in the pitch. Line shot, this gets into the hole in center field. And the Mariner Marauders get their first base hit. On a ground ball right down the middle, gets past the glove of a diving Theron Perkins right near the bag. Marauders get their first base hit of the afternoon here in the bottom of the fourth. Here is the shortstop, Caleb Atoy, who grounded out to Hunter Zalasco in the bottom of the second inning. And Xander, first pitch, low ball one. And that was pitch number 12, so it will definitely exceed that. It's just looking, look, just very fascinating after, at this point. And a curveball, this one going in the dirt, ball two. And the first base runner for the Mariner Marauders since Cody McDuffie back in the second inning. He got out in a 5-4-3 double play, 2-0, swing and a miss, strike one. Fifty, I have fifty. And tries butting for it. Ball throw to second. He gets him out by a mile. Tommy Lindgren throws out another base runner at second. He throws out Jorge Arusha at second by a mile and a half on that one. Throws it to Hunter Zalasco. That will end the fourth inning. No runs on one hit, no errors, and nobody left on. Score stays at six to nothing. Lake Stevens over Mariner. Jorge Arusha. Going back to the mound in the fifth, they'll face off against Ethan Jansen, Tommy Lindgren, and Tate Brusty. Five, six, and seven hitters for the first time. So going to the top of the fifth, score stays six nothing Vikings. And we are now back in the top of the fifth inning. Lake Stevens, they lead Mariner six nothing. Wind up in the first pitch from Arusha, strike one looking to the third baseman, Ethan Jansen. He'll face off against Jansen, Tommy Lindgren, the catcher, and Tate Brust, the first baseman. Jansen one for two with an RBI single in the first. A swing and a miss strike two. On the next pitch from Arusha. And the 0-2 in the dirt, ball one. Against three batters, Arusha has thrown 15 pitches, seven balls and eight strikes. So that is what it'll start with. Here entering this inning, one ball and two strikes. Arusha the pitch, wing and a miss, he strikes out. Ethan Jansen, the second time this afternoon that Jansen has struck out. This is the first strikeout for Jorge Arusha. Here is the catcher, Tommy Lindgren, 0 for 2 with a pair of flyouts to the center fielder, Jorge Arusha, before he was brought up to the mound. Arusha, first pitch. In the dirt, ball one. And the wind up and the pitch. Strike one looking. Let's go three. Come on, Tommy. Let's go. Evens the count at go one and Tommy. one. Let's go now. And a fly ball. This one going in the short center field again. And he'll be running for it and will make the catch. Into the new center fielder, Trenton Pacheco. Who moves from his left field position. Now here is Tate Brust, the first baseman. First pitch, inside ball one. Tate, two for two with two runs. And so far, one of the many contributors 
to the six runs that the Vikings have in this game. The wind up and the 1 0 Arushio in the dirt ball, too. And a ball three. Count now three balls, no strikes. First time that a Mariner pitcher has actually seen that 3 0. Strike one looking. And so, from what looks like out in the Mariner outfield, it looks like the outfield has changed their positions as well. Jacob Coelho moving from right field to left field, 3-1. Chopper, this one going to the shortstop. A toy who throws the first, a nice pick by Transom, but he bobbles the ball. And so it'll be another error on Caleb Atoy. It'll bring Tate the first again with two outs here in the top of the fifth. And now here is Jace Merkerson, who is two for two. Tate Bruss will stay at two for two with two singles. Here's Jace Merkerson trying to go three for three. So far, a very memorable debut game for Merkerson. Two singles, an RBI, and a run. It was thrown out at home. This one, a line shot past the third baseman, McDuffie. And this will be a single for Merkerson as McDuffie did not lift up his glove enough to field the ball. And it goes clean past him. Brusco's the second. Now count as a base hit for Merkerson, who is now three for three. On the afternoon here, Xander Fogel got a base hit on a 2-0 count back in the fourth inning and scored off of that RBI double by Zelasco. So now with two outs in the top of the fifth, there are runners on first and second. And Arushia, first pitch, low ball one. So it's Coelho moving from right to left, 1-0. Ground ball, this one going in to center field. It'll be caught by the center fielder, Pacheco, who had to leap up to make it in right center. That will end the top of the fifth. No runs on one hit, one error, and two runners left on. Score stays at 6-0. Xander Fogel on fire on the mound through four innings. It'll face off against the 5-6 and 7 hitters, Caleb Atoy, Cody McDuffie, and Ryan McCann pending if there are any pitch hitters for the Marauders, we go into the bottom of the fifth inning. Score stays at 6 0. Lake Stevens over Mariner. And we are now back in the bottom of the fifth inning. The storyline from the Vikings Xander Fogel on the mound. 51 pitchers through four. And so far, he is trying very, very hard and doing really, really well so far. The first pitch from Xander Fogel to Caleb Atoy. He tried bunting for it. He reached for it above the strike zone, counts as a strike. And the umpire down the first baseline says that he went for it, count starts at 0 and 1. Next pitch upstairs, ball one. As Xander will face off against the the third baseman, Cody McDuffie and Ryan McCann, the 1 1. Low ball two. And Xander Fogel, seven balls and eight strikes for 15 pitches, for a total of 16 balls, 35 strikes, and 51 pitches through four innings of play. Two balls, one strike. Outside, ball three. Three balls and one strike. Xander, the windup. And a ball four, a leadoff walk for Xander Fogel against the shortstop. Caleb Batoig, it is the first walk for Fogel and the second consecutive inning in which the Marauders have a base runner. Here is Cody McDuffie, the third baseman, got on base off of an error by Hunter Zelasco, but then got out at second base on a 5-4-3 double play. A nice play by Jansen. Runner goes. Tommy, does he get him out at second again? Yes, he does. Did he get him? No, he's safe at second. Theron Perkins could not get the tag in time. And Caleb Atoy goes to second on a stolen base. And so for the first time this afternoon here in the bottom of the fifth, Mariner has a runner in scoring position. Count starts at 1-0. and And the wind up and the pitch in the dirt. Ball two. 
So it'll be number 11, Max Savchuk. He is currently on deck. Count it 2-0. and oh. And Xander in the stretch looks over at second. Love it, belt length 2-0. Oh. Upstairs, ball three. Xander looking, ball four, and a four pitch walk to Cody McDuffie. And that'll put runners on first and second. Here is Max Savchuk, who is pinch hitting for the catcher McCann. And Xander looking over at second base in the stretch. Glove at belt length, first pitch. A strike one looking to Savchuk. Savchuk playing at right field for Jacob Coelho, who moved to left field, who is playing for Trent Pacheco, Trenton Pacheco, who's playing at center. And the 0 1, a nice pitch. And a count now 0 and 2. And a curve that just went down low. He's playing for. So Savchuk playing at right field for Coelho, who is playing at left field for Pacheco, who is playing at center field for Jorge Arusha, who is on the mound for Zachary Graham, who is currently behind the plate. And the 0-2 outside ball one. There's a very complicated defensive change when a new pitcher came along, but that's what happened. One ball and two strikes. And Zachary Graham, the pitcher, is now behind the plate. And Ryan McCann is back at the dugout, one and two. Swing and a miss, he gets Max Sabchuk swinging. Strikeout number six on the afternoon for Xander Fogel. Now here is Peter Transon, number 32, the first baseman. Struck out on three pitches to start the bottom of the third. Xander getting the sign from Tommy. Looks over at second, first pitch, and a strike one looking. Fastball under the strike zone. Xander in the stretch, runner on first and second. Foul ball hits the fence. Above the backstop behind home plate, count now at 0-2 once again. Xander, he was able to strike out Transon and strike out the side in the bottom of the third. Transon and Tyson May on an 0-2 count. My mistake, Transon, May, and Pacheco all on an 0-2 count with a trio of foul balls. Two to Tyson, May, one to Pacheco. So it wasn't three strikeouts on nine pitches, but more like three strikeouts on 12 pitches as there were no balls recorded in that third inning as well. Count at no balls and two strikes with one out in the bottom of the fifth. A toy gets second. Cody McDuffie at first. And the 0-2, Xander. This one, check swing. This one get dropped by Theron. As he tried to call for it, as Theron and Tate Bruss tried to catch the ball in short right field, could not make it. He gets in and out of the glove of Theron. It'll be an error as it'll be the bases are loaded. We have Atoyg at third, McDuffie at first, and now Peter Transon at first. And now here is Tyson May, the designated hitter. And struck out swinging on three pitches. First pitch, foul ball. Hits the backstop and rolls towards the Lake Stevens dugout along the first base line. On the rocky outline that borders the dugout and the fence. Bases are loaded for the first time this afternoon for the Mariner Marauders. One out in the fifth. And Xander the 0-1. Swing and a miss, strike two. Yeah. 
And Xander ahead of the count. 0-2. Oh, yeah. Strike three called. Yeah. Xander freezes Tyson May for his second strikeout against a designated hitter. It is now strikeout number one, two, three, four, five, six, seven on the afternoon as the Marauders go to the top of the order for the third time around. Trenton Pacheco, now the center fielder. He is 0 for 2 with a pop out to Fogel and a strikeout. First pitch. Line drive shot. Over the glove is Alaska. One run's going to score. Here comes McDuffie. He's riding around third. And the throw at home will be offline. It'll be a two-run single for Trenton Pacheco. The score now, Lake Stevens six, Mariner two. It'll move Peter Trance into second base. And both runs will be unearned towards Xander due to the error. Here is Jacob Coelho. 0 for 2. They ground out to the third baseman, Ethan Jansen, a short ground out and struck out swinging to start the fourth. And the first pitch by Xander. This one, a short fly ball. Xander going for it. It'll land in foul territory as Tate Bruss was the closest to it. Tried diving for it. Dirt in the air right in front of the Mariner dugout. And the count will start at an 0-1. Transon and May. My mistake, Transon and Pacheco both looking to advance. And Xander at 0-1. Looks over second towards Transon. Yeah, and a ball one. And upstairs evens the count. And Xander in the stretch wind up. And a strike two looking. Count now at one and two. And Xander, one and two, looks over at second ahead of the count, the pitch. Gets past Tommy and will fall down. It'll be a wild pitch as the runners will advance. Pacheco to second and Trance in the third. As Mariner now even closer to getting more runs on the board. Count now two balls and two strikes. Coelho. A base hit can make this a close game, but Xander is ahead of the count two and two, the wind up the pitch. And that will hit Coelho square on the back. And he could feel that he is on one knee right near the plate. Right at the number. He is holding on to his lower back and he is currently limping as the home plate umpire trying to help him out. And it'll be a quick timeout here in the bottom of the fifth. Bases are now loaded. We got the Mariner manager to check on Coelho. Take a quick break here in the bottom of the fifth. Bases are loaded with two outs and a six to two. Lake Stevens over Mariner. And we are now back in the bottom of the fifth inning. Lake Stevens. Starting with a timeout. Looks like they're going to take Xander out of the game. Well, I guess we're going to have another timeout then. Xander's walking over to the dugout. They're going to bring in Tate Brust. And that will be it for Xander Fogel. Bailey Corley will play at first base. We'll take another break. Bases are loaded with two outs. in the bottom of the fifth score is 6-2. to two, Lake Stevens over Mariner. And we are now back in the bottom of the fifth inning. The Mariner Marauders, they have scored two runs in this inning and currently have the bases loaded. They have chased Xander Fogel out of the game after throwing four and two-thirds, allowing no earned runs and two hits. Tate Brusty, first pitch to the number three hitter, Zachary Graham, a strike one looking. And Fogel, four and two-thirds, 76 pitches. No matter how many runs are scored in this inning, he will have no earned runs. He's allowed two hits, walking one, striking out seven. And the 0-1 pitch, fastball inside, ball one. Tate Brust playing in his fifth game of the year, 1-1 one one with an ERA of 3.11, throwing nine innings, allowing four earned runs, 11 walks, striking out three batters, the 1-1. Yeah. 
And a strike two, looking, count as one and two. Jacob Coelho at first, Trenton Pacheco at second, and Peter Transon at third, and Graham represents the game-tying run for the Marauders. And Tate, the wind-up in the one-two. Chopper, going into the infield grass. Alasco, the quick throw to the first baseman, Bailey Corley is in time to end the bottom of the fifth inning. It is two runs off of one hit. One error and three runners left on. Mariner gets a couple of runs on the board, makes the score. Lake Stevens six, Mariner two. As Jorge Arusha is expected to go back on the mound here in the top of the six. He'll face off against Hunters Alasco, Devin McWaters, and Caden Pattison. And the top three hitters in the batting order looking to get that six run lead back after the Marauders trimmed it down to four here at Mariner High School. Again, the top of the sixth inning, the score, Lake Stevens six, Mariner two. And we are now back in the top of the sixth inning. Mariner, they have trimmed Lake Stevens lead down to four runs at six to two. The first pitch from Arushio, and the ball gets away from the third baseman, McDuffie, on the first pitch to Hunter's Alasco to start off. The top of the sixth inning. It is the fourth error by the Mariner Marauders this afternoon. Brings back up the revised edition of the first three hitters of the order. Now we have Devin McWaters, first pitch. First pitch, a foul as Devin gets a piece of it. Hits the backstop behind home plate. And McWaters entering this game of four for 18, 222 hours. That was the third time this year he's been walked. Ball two. Hunter going to second. Does he get him in time? Yes, he does. As it didn't even look like the shortstop, Caleb Atoy even tagged him. It looked like he... Uh, the, a nice play by the catcher, Zachary Graham, to get... Zalasco out at second, but it looked like from here that the shortstop, Caleb Atoy, brought his arm up a little too early. And that pitch was a ball, next pitch is a ball two, and the 2-1 pitch, a strike two looking. And Atoy, the wind up in the 2-2 pitch, upstairs full count. And a full count, three and two. The windup and the pitch from Urushia, swing and a miss, strike three. That'll be the second out, the second strikeout for Urushia and the second out of the six brings up Caden Patterson. And Urushia through an inning and two thirds has thrown 30 pitches entering this inning. First pitch, a strike one looking. <laughs> and Arushia the 0 1. A little sidearm pitch, ground ball to the second baseman who bobbles the baseball. And it is the fifth error for the Mariner Marauders. The second baseman, David Villanueva, bobbles the baseball. And the Vikings get another base runner this inning off of another error. There's seven errors so far in this game. Five from Mariner, two from Lake Stevens. Brings up Theron Perkins. First pitch. Low. Un right, looked like it was right under the strike zone. Strike one looking as Theron. He popped out to the shortstop, Caleb Atoy, to end the top of the fourth inning with runners on second and third. Throw to first, not in time. And Arushia the throw. Throw to first is not in time. The first baseman, Peter Transit, could not tag Patterson at first. Count is even at one and one. And Arushia the wind up. Inside ball two. And Arushia looking at first in the stretch. 
And the pitch. Low ball three. Count is now three and one. Currently the bottom of the sixth inning. Cascade leading four to one. A hard hit ball. This one going to Duke. Left field, back it goes. That is foul. A very well hit ball by Theron Perkins, but it leans in the foul territory in left field. The count is now full with two outs. And Theron entering this game, a team high 383 average, 23 for 60. Looking for his first homer. Payoff. Fly ball, foul. As the count will stay full, Theron keeping the at bat alive so the Vikings can get some runners on base and hopefully some runners that will pass home plate. Count stays full to Ruscio. It is the first time since the first batter that he faced back in the fourth that he has faced a full count. That was against McWaters, and that ended in a full count walk. And Arusia looking over at first base in the stretch. Glove right near the head. The payoff pitch in the dirt to the catcher, Zachary Graham. Ball four. The Vikings have runners on first and second base. Patterson goes to second. As we go to Ethan Jansen, one for three. He has struck out in the last two plate appearances. And Arushi again, the sign from Graham now in the stretch. Looking over at second, lined up in the pitch. And a ball one inside. Oh, Arusha in the stretch, one and two. Kane at second. A one hopper. As a runner is a throw to third. Is it in time? It is in time at third. As the third base coach, Jan Novak, is saying that Cody McDuffie didn't tag Caden Patterson at third. He was right there and he saw it. But the umpire says he's out and that will end the six. Uh, Mariner gets out of the top of the sixth inning, highlighted by two base runners that were out on the base pass on very questionable calls. No runs off of no hits. Two errors and one runner left on. The score stays at 6-2 to two as we go into the bottom of the sixth inning. Tate Bruss back on the mound. Look at the pitch's first full inning of the game. He'll face off against the middle of the order. Jorge Arushia, Caleb Toig, and Cody McDuffie as the score stays at 6-2 Lake Stevens here at Mariner High School. And we are now back in the bottom of the sixth inning. Lake Stevens leading Mariner 6-2. The first pitch from Tate Bruss to the pitcher, Jorge Arushia, a ball one. Arushia one for two with a single in the fourth inning. The first base hit for the Marauders in one of two when he struck out swing in the first. This one a fly ball. This one staying in the infield. Hunters Alasco looking for it in the sun, calling for it, and he will make the catch. For the first out in the bottom of the sixth inning, here is Caleb Atoig. 0 for 1. Grounded out to Zalasco in the second inning and got on base on a leadoff walk against Xander Fogel back in the bottom of the fifth and was one of two runs that scored off of that two run single by the leadoff hitter Trenton Pacheco. The leadoff first pitch. And this one, a first pitch is a foul ball. Count will start at 0-1. Tate Brust against one batter, which was Zachary Graham, who grounded out on a short ground out to Hunters Alaska through only four pitches. This one a swing and a missed strike too. As Tate gets ahead of the shortstop. Uh, it was a Toig and McDuffie who were the two runners that scored. And they wind up in the 0-2 pitch. One hopper to Tommy Lindgren, ball one. So for the Mariner Marauders, the reason why they are 0-16 and, and not 0-18 or, or 2-16 and 16 is because they've had two games against the Monroe Bearcats forfeited due to unknown reasons. 1-2 inside, ball two in. Making the count full, two balls and two strikes. And for the Marauders, they will end the season with 18 games. 
on their overall record. Last season, they finished with 19. This is nothing new. The 2-2 two -two is strike three called against Caleb Atoyk looking. The first strikeout for Tate Bruss in the bottom of the six. Uh, brings up the third baseman, Cody McDuffie. He has yet to have an official at-bat for the Mariner Marauders. He got on base in the second inning off of an error by Zalasco and then got on base in the fifth inning off of a four-pitch walk against Xander Fogel and was the second run that scored off of that two-run single by Pacheco. And Tate, the first pitch. Hard hit shot going into right center field. That is, gets past the left fielder, Jace Merkerson. McDuffie is going to be going to second base. And no, he's going to be going to third. That goes all the way to the wall. The throw to third. Does he get him in time? Yes, he does. The ball gets away from Merkerson. Throws to Alaska, who throws to Ethan Jansen to end the six. What a way to end the inning. Merkerson tried diving for the ball. That one got all the way to the fence. McDuffie then saw that the ball went all the way to the fence. He then threw it to Zalasco, the cutoff man, who threw it to Jansen. It is a 7-6-5 to end the bottom of the sixth inning. No runs off of one hit. That was a Two-bagger for McDuffie, who tried stretching it in the three. No errors, and nobody left on. The score stays at 6-2. to two. What a way to end the sixth inning right there for the Vikings. As you go into the top of the seventh, Jorge Arushia will face off against Ethan Jansen. He'll try to finish off his at-bat at the five spot. Tommy Lindgren and Tate Brust. As the Vikings will try to get one last chance to try and get some more runs on the board before... Attempting to close them down in the bottom of the seventh here from Mariner High School. The score stays at 6-2. to two. And we are now back in the top of the seventh inning. And the first pitch from Arushia to Ethan Jansen. A ball one. We got ourselves a defensive change for the Marauders here in the seventh inning. Playing for Caleb Atoy at shortstop is Wander Castillo. The 0-1, a foul ball. That one looked like it was going right near the football stadium, right behind the Lake Stevens dugout, Goddard Stadium. As the count is now even at one and one, it will be number 10, Wander Castillo, who will be playing for Caleb Atoy at shortstop. Count is one and one, Arushia. And one hopper to the catcher, Zachary Graham. Two balls and one strike. And the 2-1, one, one hopper off of the catcher's mask of Graham. Now three balls and one strike. So after two consecutive innings with 15 pitches thrown, Jorge Arushia has thrown 18 pitches in the sixth inning against technically five batters. Three balls and one strike, the windup and the pitch. Swing and a miss count is full at three and two. So he's thrown 48 pitches in two and two thirds. Now 53, the payoff pitch, the wind up. Swing and a miss. And Arushia strikes out Ethan Jansen again, this time for the third time. And here is the catcher, Tommy Lindgren, 0 for three, with three pop outs to the center fielder, two to Arushia, and then one to the center fielder, Trenton Pacheco, who moved to left. Moved from left to center. First pitch, a ball in the dirt. Great ball one. Oh, Jesus, I just realized what I just put myself into. The first two pop outs to center were to Arushia, except in the fifth, yeah, in the fifth inning where he popped out to Trenton Pacheco at center field, who was playing from left. And a ball two out inside. They count now two and oh. It's Pacheco, who is playing at center from left field to where Jacob Coelho is playing there from right field. <laughs> and a 2-0, and a ball three. So Coelho playing at left from right field for Trenton Pacheco, who is playing at center field for Jorge Arusha, who is on the mound. Three balls, no strikes, the wind up in the pitch, and a strike one looking. So that is 
Strikeout number three on the afternoon for Arushia on the sixth strikeout for Mariner pitching. Three and one. A foul chopper hits the backstop behind home plate. Linger leaning on that one. And the payoff. And a slow roller gets in and out of the glove of Arushia, who tosses it to the first baseman, Jake, might be safe, Peter Transon. What he's second out in the top of the seventh. Now here is the first baseman, Tate Bruss, two for two with two runs, and has reached first base in all three plate appearances. And the first pitch, Tate. And a foul chopper hits the fence, count starts at 0-1. So now there's also a number of changes as well. The 0-1 pitch, a swing and a miss strike two. So now is Ryan McCann playing for Cody McDuffie at third. And my mistake at shortstop playing for a toy is McDuffie. This one a hard hit ball. This one a ground ball into the hole in the left field. My mistake, right field. As Juan Der Castillo moving into left field now, it gets past the glove. Well, the diving second baseman, David Villanueva, and Tate Brust is now three for three. On the afternoon, reaching first base on all four plate appearances. Here is Jace Merkerson, who is three for three on the afternoon. First pitch is strike one looking. And the 0-1 fly ball foul. This one landing in the walk area. Right near the softball field where now the there was a game earlier between Monroe and Mariner. That game has ended. The 0-2 pitch, swing and a miss. And the catcher's grand throw in the first in time to end the top of the seventh. For strikeout number four, here is no runs on one hit, no errors, and one runner left on. Blake Stevens, they now need three outs to snap a two-game losing streak and get their first win since winning at home against the Mount Vernon Bulldogs. Here's the bottom of the seventh inning. Tate Brussel face off against Max Savchuk, Peter Transon, and Tyson May, pending if there is a pinch hitter on the way for the Marauders as they currently trail by four here at Mariner High School. And we are now back into the bottom of the seventh inning. And it'll be Tate Bruss who will be facing off against Ryan McCann, who will be playing back again, replacing Max Savchuk, who was a pinch hitter for him back in the fifth. First pitch upstairs for a ball one. Tate Bruss throwing eight pitches in the sixth inning for a total of 12 total. And a strike one looking. Count now one and one as Tate Bruss will face off against the bottom three hitters of the order. Ryan McCann, Peter Transon, and Tyson May. Count is one and one. Tate the pitch. Fly ball, this one's playable. Theron Perkins calling for it in short right field. Running for it, making the catch right next to the first baseman, Bailey Corley. For the first out in the bottom of the seventh, here is Peter Transon, 0 for 1 with a strikeout, and then got on base on an error by Theron. After a case of miscommunication with him and the First baseman Tate Brust, as he was stranded at third in that huge fifth inning for the Marauders. I got a couple of runs on the board. Tate now in the stretch, getting the sign from Lingren. First pitch, swing and a miss, strike one. So Jorge Arushia finishing his night three and two thirds with 66 pitches, two hits, no earned runs, two walks, and four strikeouts on the afternoon. A pretty solid outing in relief. The 0-1, a screamer for foul. Forrest, the Mariner dug out past the first baseline. Count now, no balls and two strikes. As Tate looking to shut down Transon, trying to strike him out here. The 0-2 swing and a miss. 
Ball gets away from Lindgren, throws to first, and the catcher's helmet ricochets off of his head as he fields the ball and throws to Bailey Corley in time. It's the second strikeout for Tate for the second out of the seventh. The Vikings are one out away from another victory. Here is Tyson May, the designated hitter and the number nine hitter, as he has struck out twice entering this at bat, swinging in the third, looking in the fifth. Tate, the first pitch, low in the dirt, ball one. Uh, Tate Bruss, an ERA just over three. It looks like there's a chance he might bring it back down after the end of this one, the 1-0 uh, outside, ball two. And the quick pitch to Owe. Shot straight to Bailey Corley. And this one belongs to the Lake Stevens Vikings. Vikings now at 9 and 10. The final score, Lake Stevens 6, Mariner 2. No runs, no hits, no errors, and nobody left on. The winning pitcher is Xander Fogel. He's got his first win of the year. And Tate Brust during two and a third innings of relief. And we'll get the save once again. As he also got the save in the last victory for the Vikings. Against the Mount Vernon Bulldogs. So this will be the final road game for the Lake Stevens Vikings here in the 2019 season. Again, the winning pitcher is Xander Fogel. The losing pitcher is Zach Graham. The Mariner Marauders going down to 0-17. And the Lake Stevens Vikings now up to 9 and 10. They are looking to bring their overall record up to 500 and to bring Mariner down to a winless record on Friday, April 26th, the final game of the 2019 season where the Vikings will play in their final home game. Again, at 6.07 p.m. here from Mariner High School. Final score, Lake Stevens 6, Mariner 2. My name is Payne Patchett. You have been listening to Lake Stevens Vikings Varsity Baseball.